Now, F is a frigate which is 5 metres due west of a tanker T. Their velocities are 2i plus 5j and minus 4i minus 3j respectively. Find the velocity of F relative to T. Well, F relative to T is easy money. Why is F relative to T easy money? What do we have to do? Vft is minus Vt, and you, you usually get five marks for this, so. <coughs> F and T, everybody right with that? So one of them is uh, 2i plus 5j and the other one is anybody else? Minus, minus so minus uh, yeah you're right we'll just won't mess it up for a second. So what's happening there? Seven I and six I and 8J, 6I plus 8J. What does that mean? Relative to each other, relative to the tanker, the frigate is travelling 6, 6 metres across and 8 metres up every second. Do you get that? Now, here's the interesting thing. We're going to do what's called a displacement diagram. The displacement diagram is like this. Okay? One of them, the frigate is the first one, it's due west, and the tanker is uh, this one here, yeah? The frigate is going upwards, isn't it? Two and five. While the tanker is going, which direction? Four and, anybody? Down three. Are they on a collision course? Why are they not on a collision course? J's are completely different, aren't they? So we've all agreed they're not they're not gonna collide whatsoever, yeah? Now the next point of business is how far are they apart uh, part and ways every time? Well in the J direction, this one's gone up five, but this one's gone down three. That means they're that they're splitting splitting in the J direction at 8 per second, would you agree with that? Which is this 8 here. Are they coming towards each other or away from each other? Uh, in the I direction. Towards that? 6. Now, the other thing here is guys, which one have we kept stationary? Which one did we keep stationary? T is fixed to the spot. And now we're going to observe what F does relative to T. Going to rub out those diagrams here. Relative to T, F is going what direction? We discussed it before. It's going 6 up for every 8 across. You got that? 6 up for every 8 across. So F is basically going. Six up, oh sorry, six across for every eight up. So, sorry, that's realistically, uh, this diagram should have been a bit more, would you agree, a bit more this way? Yeah? Now, what angle is in here? How do I figure out that angle? Tan inverse 8 over, which is 53.13. Would you agree with that? What does that make this angle here? 53.13. When is it at its closest? So, please remember, this is the frigate moving relative to the tanker okay to the tanker so group is there another one in there as well now this is this guy here and what's he doing he's traveling up in this direction here eventually he gets reasonably close what's the closest approach do you think when his course is perpendicular to t when its course is perpendicular to t 
What does that make? Uh, what does that make this distance? What does that make that angle there? Right angles, yeah. And what's the question asking you? What was the shortest distance between them in the subsequent motion? What was the distance from here to here at the very beginning? So what distance is the opposite? That's the distance between the two objects. So what distance, is, uh, how do we get that guys? Sign 53.13 equals D over 5,000. What's 5,000? Sign 53.13. 39999, which is? 4,000. We're 4,000 meters away. Now, here's the next part, alright? I'm going to do a bonus part here, okay? How long, does, how long did it take them to be that close? Would you agree that the, that the frigate travelled from here all the way to here? It travelled relative to the tanker from here to here. Would you agree with that? What speed did it travel that way? It travelled six across and eight up. Because we're talking <coughs> relative here, aren't we? So, what's the hypotenuse of six and eight? It's travelling... They're, it's traveling 10 meters per second in that direction there. It's traveling 10 meters per second along this direction here. Until it gets all the way up. What distance did it need to cover to get there? Instead of sine, what could we have used? And if we used cos instead of sine, what would we have gotten? 3,000. It actually travelled 3,000 metres relative to the tanker to get to this position. How fast did it do that in? Distance over time? 3,000 divided by 10, which would be 300 seconds. I have no doubt you're lost and your head's wrecked in some cases. Okay? We'll try another one. This one here, yeah? Once again, due west. Okay. Alright, let's just find the velocities of T and Q to start off with, okay? So what's ship T doing? South of east. What does south of east mean? East is this direction. And what's south of it? Downwards. So it's travelling at 30 degrees, this direction here. How fast is it going? Ten. What does that make that? Ten cos thirty and okay. So me do me a favor and tell me what ten sine thirty and ten cos thirty are. So what's phi t guys? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, speed it does. Yes. Five root three. I and. Minus 5j. What is it? Minus 5j? It's going south, isn't it? Okay. What about the second one then? Let's get rid of that for a second. What about the next part? Uh, velocity of q. What, where's q going, guys? What direction is it going in? What does northwest mean? Okay, and how fast is it going? What does that mean for the other two? Uh, 20 sine 45 and 20. Oh, it's 45, and think Alan told me what, what you go for that. Somebody just do 20 sine 45 in the calculator for me. 10 or 2. Okay, is it positive I or a negative? Northwest is a positive I or a negative I? Why? Because it's west. Okay, next part. Sorry? J, yeah? Perfect. <coughs> Find the 
velocity of t rounds up to q. What does do decimals here, will we? Three spaces of decimals do the trick. Might as well. P T Q. Velocity of T rounds up to Q. The second letter being the all important letter. Okay? So what's V T minus V Q? Well, it's gonna be a would you it's gonna actually end up being a double negative. So it's gonna be five root three plus 10 root 2. What's that put it as? 22.8. Look, we'll take that. And the other two? 5j take away 10 root 2. What do we get there? Oh, sorry, uh, both negative, aren't they? Yeah, minus 19.14, okay? We'll just do two decimal places, so minus 19.14, okay? Okay. Find the magnitude and direction of the velocity of t relative to q. Just before we do that, here's what I wanted to get into your head. At the start of the question, this is a distance diagram, not a velocity diagram. Did you got that? Distance, not velocity at the moment. Which one was west of the other one? Which one's to the left? Okay. What way do we say T is going again? This direction here. Now this is a this is a quick bit of velocity in here now. That's five root three and five. Which way is Q go? So? So, and what do we say there? 10 root 2 and 10 root 2. Now, what do, basically, they're separating, they're separating along the J component, aren't they? How fast are they separating? That one plus that one, do you get it? Okay. Now, why is it minus? Remember which which letter did we say a second? Which one's not allowed to move? Q is not allowed to move. That means that you're adding the ten root two onto the five, and you're getting a combined effort at going down at nineteen. Does that make sense? The Q is not allowed to move. So if you're a person on shift Q, you're going to see shift T absolutely powering south relative to you. Do you get it? relative to you it's going to look like it's going faster south than it actually is does that make sense if you're traveling north you make everything else look like it's going south and stuff that's already traveling south you make it look like they're traveling faster south does that make sense now what else does it do it's going towards they're both going towards each other aren't they would you agree with that Everybody agree that T is travelling east, isn't it? But what does the effect of Q travelling west do? It makes T look like it's going faster to the east than it actually is. And that's why it ends up getting bumped up to 22.8. Because you end up adding them both together. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, now finally. Find the magnitude of direction of the velocity of T relative to Q. Here's what we're going to do. 22.8 across 19.14 down. Will somebody do Pythagoras theorem? Will somebody else tan inverse 19.14 over 22.8? Who's doing the tan inverse? Abhijit is on tan inverse. Alan, you on Pythagoras? Brilliant. So, what you get? Sorry? 40.01 40.01 yeah. is what I'm hearing yeah, 0.125 0.01 yeah. 40.01 okay, anybody else have any Alan, what's the hypotenuse? Uh, 29.768 mm -hmm. now guys, what this basically means is that relative to each other T 
is traveling 29.769 kilometers at an angle of 40 degrees south of east relative to Q. Q is basically stuck to the spot. Is that alright? Now, find the shortest distance between them and the subsequent motion correct to one decimal place. Shortest distance. So I'm just going to keep all this here for a minute. Now, what am I going to draw next? Can anybody tell me? Q is stuck to the spot. Which direction does T travel relative to it? This way or this way? Up or down? Down. Left or right? Okay. And it goes this angle here. Eventually, so T is traveling relative to Q because Q is stuck to the spot. And basically we have, uh, we'll represent T with the purple blob here. Tell me when you think it's, I should stop. About there, yeah? And what's this? 90 degrees up to Q. Now, do next is guys, what angle is this here? 40.01. What distance is it from T to Q? Huh? 100 kilometers. Now, uh, what is the distance D? Sine 40.01 equals D over 100, which means what? What's that in your calculator? Sorry? There we are for a second. How long does it take for this to happen? I could find I could find out the length of here to here, couldn't I? And what do I need to divide that length by once I get it? That's the distance divided by the speed. What's the speed? Twenty-nine point seven uh, seven six nine. And I find out how long it took for that to happen. Uh, you guys tonight, maybe you guys should try and make a question. Uh, maybe one, two, four, and five. One, two, four, five. All right.